What's the story, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Um, this is just just a start eleven prediction show. Um, big game, obviously coming up now tomorrow afternoon against Aston Villa at Anfield. And uh, it's definitely one where we got to perform much better in if you want to get the three points. I saw a few clips of what Villa can do under Unai Emery. They're a very progressive team that like to get the, they like to get the ball and play, play between the lines and play out from the back. They're also a team that are very adaptable in the transition as well. When let's say you got two whole midfielders in Bubaka Kamara and Douglas Louise, and it can get the ball out wide very quickly. And they've got a striker in Ollie Watkins who, if you give him a chance in the penalty box, nine times out of ten, he normally puts the ball in the back of the net. John McGinn's obviously a very hard working midfield player for them too, who if you play him in any position, whether he be on the left, would he be on the right, or would he be on centrally? He does always deliver, you know. He is a dream. he's a manager's dream, as they would say, you know. Kind of what Jordan Henderson was at Liverpool back in his time. But anyway, that's about that's enough about Villa. I'll we'll go back to Liverpool. The start at eleven prediction. Um, in goal, Allison, outstanding for us the other day. Uh, kept the goals, kept the score going. Had to put a brilliant save in, like he did it for Almiron shot. Uh, in the game against Newcastle. Um, solid enough, always dependable, and there's no change there. Back four, Trent as a right back. Um, I think this is the game where he's at home at Anfield, he has to step up now. He's the captain due to Van Dijk's suspension. And you, hopefully he can deliver and put on a man of the match performance that we all know he's capable of doing. The centre-half, right side of the centre-half, I'm going with Joe Gomez. When he came on against Newcastle... I thought he was excellent. He shored up the back line, even though we were we were had we were, we were down to ten men, and he done the job that you had to do and make sure that our defence was solid throughout that most for most of that game, as we were trying to win it, which we did. So Gomez is in there for me. The left side of centre half, I've gone for Joe Matip. Um, Matip is at the stage now where he's got one year left on his contract. He's not a bad egg in the dressing room. He'll give it. He give everything he can, you know. But he is starting to get on a bit. For but for one game a week, which Matip can be dependable for, and you know he has. He obviously has a horrible injury record, as does the likes of Canate and Gomez. But for one game a week, you need to be playing these players, and when called upon, they can deliver. And Matip plays because for aerial duels, whether it be Defending your own box or attacking the other the opposition box, that's where you think he's vital, especially for corners and free kicks. Uh, left back have gone for Andy Robertson. Again, he'll have to step up as well, be be the voice, be be one of the leaders in the dressing room and in the team as well, which he's capable of doing for Scotland. And uh, this is a game where he'll have to be very careful with the likes of Musa Diaby, who he'll be up against, who's been an ass. It's been an outstanding signing for Aston Villa. And if he probably had stayed another year, Leverkusen would have been the replacement for Mo Salah, most definitely. But he's got his hands full tomorrow as well, so hopefully he can he can cope and deliver under that extreme pressure. Midfield, I've gone with, with Toro Endo. Didn't have the best of games at St. James's Park the other day, but I feel being at Anfield, four star at the home ground, I'm sure he'd be fine. He just has a job to do to, to to tidy up any loose balls that may fall into our back four and do him job when he needs to be. Right side of centre half, uh, sorry, right side of the um, central midfielder, going for Sabasai. Great engine, can create chances, and this is probably the ideal game from where you'll get to see him put on the performance that we know we can put on and what we bought him for. Left side, McAllister. Um, I think it's it's vital to keep on playing these players. We did buy these players, you know. And I think McAllister on the left gives us the the perfect balance and when we want to control the game. And he can get forward, he can stable, he can stay buoyant, etc. He's pretty adaptable in that way. Uh front three, I've gone with Mo Salah on the right. Uh, I thought he'd done well in the game against Newcastle when he set up the goal for the winner for Darwin Nunes. He does have that pedigree. We see it. I don't think he'd be 
too distracted to what's going on off the pitch with reports that the Saudi clubs or the Saudi club that's that bought from that bought Fabinho recently for forty million are going to bid one hundred and fifty plus million for him, and uh, obviously the Saudi window is going to be closed in the next couple of days, so there's no doubt they'll come back they'll come back in for him. But I don't think Salah will be too distracted by that. He'll just he won't he's not the type of player that'll just down tools and go on strike or anything like that. He'll just play football, you know what I mean? And he'll just keep playing and that's what he's great at doing. Uh left winger <coughs> I've gone for Luis Diaz. It's very vital that we keep playing him. He's he's been our best player this season so far, three games in. Always influential, always tries to do the great things and uh, I think him on that left side especially when he got Matty Cash who likes to get forward quite a bit as well uh, should should be should allow Diaz to hopefully um <coughs> sorry just a little bit there <coughs> yeah, it's very warm today as you can imagine but um yeah le left sided um left sided uh, Diaz has to play there's there's no two ways about it and finally, uh, the centre forward, Darwin Nunes, uh, he has to play. For the two goals he scored against Newcastle, he was our man of the match. He also played, did what he had to do to put his name in his team. And he made the biggest impact any player could have made in doing so. So for me, Nunes, uh, Nunes definitely plays tomorrow. Obviously, the, the subs... We're sorted if Ferran goes wrong up front. It, we'll see Jota in reserve, Gakbo in reserve, Elliot in reserve, and even Ben Doak if he gets lucky to get a chance. Midfield, Basesic and Jones are fit. So I imagine they start on the bench. Um, and I think in, in reserve, Simicas and Kwanzaa is also uh, in reserve if that happens to any of our centre halves or full backs too. So. Yeah, and, and Kelleher also as well. If the unthinkable happens to Alisson if he comes off on injury or whatever. So, yeah, I think our, our bench is, is okay. It's content with just for one game. And then hopefully over the international break, you can get the likes of Kanati fit, Thiago fit, and obviously Graven Birch into the team as well too. And just before I go, um, I'm going to just give me a rating on the, the transfer window that's just happened. We spend over 100... And <coughs> Sorry about the... Chest, sorry about the chat there. Um, we spent 175 million in the window, 55 million if you include add ons for Alexis McAllister. We paid a 60 million release clause for Dominic Sabasai from Morby Leipzig. We paid 20 million, including add ons for Wataro Endo from Stuttgart. And the last signing we paid for was 40 million for Ryan Gravenberch. Which you include the add-ons from Bayern Munich. We needed to freshen up the midfield, which we did. But I don't think it's fully complete. I do think we'll bring in one more midfielder in January, which I think Andre from Fluminense in Brazil will get done. I think there's been a gentleman's agreement there with the club saying the player wants to go there and he'll happily just see the season out with Fluminense because they've got the Brazilian league to finish. And they've also got the, the Copa de Padores as well, competition that they're heavily involved in. So, my rate of this window, I'm going to give it a 7. I'm content with it, but it could have been a lot better. And it could have been a lot more better planned and better controlled, I feel. You know? Um, now, hopefully, in the next couple of days, we hear the position... Of the sporting director, if Jörg Schmatke is going to stay or he's going to go. Personally, he only signed a free one deal with the club, and if it was me, I probably wouldn't keep him on any longer than that. We need to be hiring a very experienced sporting director who knows what he's doing. And I heard a lot. I was I was just reading. I was reading a lot. Of, I was actually watching a lot of YouTube channels recently, and they were saying that to him. One of them mentioned Ralph Nanik. Now I know he didn't do too well at Manchester United, but at the same time he's a sporting director. And he's someone that I think Jurgen Klopp will trust. Especially when it comes to player recruitment. You know what I mean? 
he had his hands born when he was on Man United when I think the player and staff didn't respond to him. The hierarchy and Manchester United didn't really respond to him either. They didn't listen to what he had to say. They didn't listen to his ideas of how he can change the club from within. And if Radnick was available for a sporting director role for, let's say, five years, yeah, why not? Why not? He'd he would certainly help the transition if Jürgen wants to leave Liverpool at the end of his contract. So then he'd be heavily involved in picking the next manager going in and then just go from there. That's the one thing that has to get right in the next 12 months or so. Is we need to hire a new sporting director who's been very experienced, who's done the biggest and best clubs in the world, and who's also a club builder from within as well. So uh, that's all I've got to say, guys. Uh, please like, please keep on liking the videos. Let us know in the comment section down below. Please subscribe to the channel too, and also click on the notifications for the next video. The next video I'll be doing will be, will be based on the post-match reaction, and hopefully we get three more points before the international break comes around. So see you, all the best, have a good day, cheers.